I wanted to ask you, why did we buy Hot Toys to begin with? Because one of the things I've tried to do in the last couple of live streams is like really create some conversations and content for people that are coming in new to collecting. Um, and I think also there should be a conversation that's good for people who have been collecting for a while also. But just kind of talking about why did we buy Hot Toys, right? Why do we continue to buy Hot Toys? Because I know the realism is one of the biggest factors, but I think it goes deeper than that. So um, what do you think, Optical? Like, how do you kind of rationalize this? Is it really just kind of a simple as, I think it looks cool and I love kind of posing and doing photography? Like, what, why, do you, why do we think we keep buying these? I think it's the allure. One of the allure there is it, it does look real, right? Yeah. And then I, I guess... Being a man child in that <laughs> nature, who'd be like, all right, I'm gonna buy something and it looks real. And, and then on my mind, I have this thing was like, all right, it, it's gonna tell a story when I display it. It doesn't tell a story, they just stand there. You know, like literally, I just, right. it's there. But in your mind, you're 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 you are convincing yourself, it's like, all right, man, it's gonna look good when I put them next to this, and I'm gonna buy three of this, <laughs> and then I'm gonna line them up, I'm gonna put an LED light. It doesn't look if they're toys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It would never look that good in your head. And yeah. then the more you add to them, you know, the more cluttered they look, the less good they look. However, it still won't stop me because I, I don't know. I think this is the worst year that I've had with Hot Toys. So I bought a lot. <laughs> in terms of spending, you mean? It's in terms of spending. I, okay. It's so easy to buy Hot Toys nowadays. And I, I, I said this many times now on the stream. I gave up on the display part of it. I, on the display, uh, the one that you're seeing behind me, this is the most curated part of that. And <laughs> that's considered curated. For now, I just buy it because like, I want to keep that imagination going. You know, kind of like it keeps your, I guess, inner passion going, whatever that means. Kind of like you have this idea in your head. I always had this idea in my head. It's like, all right. I'm going to get this. I'm going to match it up with this. I'm going to take a picture. Never take a picture. I don't know when was the last time I uploaded anything on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been and like then, deathly ill. So that's yeah, cool. true. But well, I was just like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do. I never, never do. But deep inside, I, I guess it gets my creative flow going, even though there's no creative thing going on. But it keeps your mind, you know, your mind going. It, it keeps the gears rolling. And, and honestly, it's a good thing. I think it's a good exercise of your brain as long as it doesn't bankrupt you. And if, it, uh, if Hot Toys bankrupts you nowadays, you're doing it wrong. You're not going for deals. <laughs> but but as long as it, it just... <laughs> shiny, shiny is to surround his bed and protect him from the monster. <laughs> hey, whatever works Hey, whatever you, floats man. your hey. boat, bro. I mean, do what you got to do. <laughs> if, if you tell someone, hey, you know what? Uh, you never know. They might be currency when there's, uh, you know, zombie apocalypse and that, that's hey you could trade hot toys for medicine so. yeah it'd be like hey you know this person died and you know here he signed this i asked if he can find this before he dies so chris evans signed sign this before it. he turned into a zombie <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but, i mean there's something about hot toys the realism of it the accessories the fact that you can post them around and then there's so many complementary pieces with them that in your brain whatever these guys who's collecting i don't the ones that are watching us right now whatever their vision is, I'm pretty sure it hasn't happened yet. And it probably <laughs> won't happen. <laughs> like, you're like convincing. Oh God, he, you have COVID. Get away from me. Uh, <laughs> kidding. Everybody uh, has COVID at this yeah, point, bro. <laughs> but it was just like, yeah, I mean, I, I think we all have this vision and whatever that is, as long as it's still healthy, it doesn't, you know, do harm to you. Like somebody says here, I, that's, that's what, what it, it brings me happiness. I guess that's right. easy to say because he was like, oh, you, you know, a nice car can bring you happiness too. But yeah, you know, I'd rather buy multiple things than one nice car. You know? <laughs> exactly. And optical, I, I think the, one of the reasons I asked this question too is because I think people do wonder from the outside looking in saying like, why do people buy hot toys? Like, why do people pay the prices they pay for hot toys? And it's interesting when from the outside looking in, uh, that, that could be a very legitimate question because I thought that way before I started buying hot toys, I was like collecting things like props, doing cosplay, whatever. But I was looking at hot toys and I was always like, man, those prices though, like it's an action figure. Why would I pay 250? And it was 250 at the time. Why would I pay 250 for a figure like that until I got my first one and then it becomes real to you. It becomes legitimate, it becomes normalized. And then at that point you're like, okay, I can start buying more of these because it's normal to buy this. Like, especially now, right? If you ask most people, 
99% of people, you, I'll give you a PS5 or a Hot Toys Carnage. <laughs> like, what do you think people are going to say, right? They're going to say, I would buy a PS5. But the collectors out there like us, might, some of them might be like, I'll take the Carnage, right? Which is pretty crazy. So I, not crazy and wrong, but it's just crazy in that it's, it, it's different than what most people would expect or say. So I think, man, I don't know. I think one of the reasons that I buy Hot Toys is because they give me, like you said, it's, a, it's an outlet, right? It's an outlet for us to express um, our enjoyment in something and also to express our own creativity. And like you said, how we display it, right? I think it's pretty cool. It gives us, it gives us something to do, productive, right? Because yeah. there are any number of things you could be doing. You could be going out and, you know, buying drugs or, you know, prostitution, whatever, right? Like, but we're here sitting here buying figures. As long as you're not bankrupting yourself or, you know, destroying your savings, then, I mean, by all means, we're, we're doing something that I think allows us to connect with like-minded people and to get things that make us excited. I mean, you don't have to be like um, ridiculous about it, but I mean, at the same time, I think it's one of those things, I think we buy them because they look cool, they make us happy, and they give us something productive to do that allow us to um, sort of represent our excitement for the film and the characters. Don't you think? I mean, that's what I would say. Yeah, I mean, in, I think all of us here, even the ones watching, they, whether they agree or not, the, the reason you bought the figure is maybe you like the movie. I'm, I'm guessing like that's a right. big part of that. You like the movie and you want to relive that movie regardless of how good you post the figure or not. Let's say you're a terrible poser, which, I, you know, I'm not the best poser out there. But in your mind, it'll be like, all right, I'm going to post it like this. And then you take a picture. It looks it looks so out of what you're thinking. But you had that enjoyment. It's like you take a, a you you took a crappy photo of a figure that's worth ten times more than your camera, but you can't buy a, a decent camera because you <laughs> bought all hot toys. But that's right. fine. That's fine. I think that's the 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 you know the best part of it is you get to relive your passion. Whatever. Not all of us can be directors. Not all of us can right. work in a film industry. So if I I I'm guessing this gets us closer to being a part of that world so to speak without you know being in that film or or whatever the case is we feel like hey i can relive the moment i can surround mandalore i'm gonna buy like you know a lot of tuscan raiders and surround I was like wow why would you do that but you know but in your mind it was like all right this is look looks gonna this is gonna look really cool and to a non i guess uh politically correct way all of these guys, if they stop collecting hot toys tomorrow, it's not like they're going to be rich in a year. They're going to find something else to do. Right. Whatever that is. Buy rims. I don't know. Collect G.I. Joes. Go back to Black Series. Uh, you know, some things are just more expensive than others. Like, if you ask a normal person, like you said, they see Carnage, they'll be like, what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah, that thing is massive. Spider? Yeah. Is that a spider? I was like, yeah. Right. But if somebody shows you... A compensator for a gun that's worth eight hundred dollars. You'd be like, "What the heck is this?" You know, you feel the same way. I was like, "This is a piece of metal." I was like, "Yeah, this is eight hundred. It's like, what? You, you, <laughs> right? This is. Well, I think it's funny optical because I always not just hot toys, but with statues too. Like, I'll show them something. Like, usually it'll be like a girl that's here on a date, right, or someone like that. You bring them over, and they'll be like, "That's really cool." And they'll be like, "How much did you pay for that?" And I'll be like, two thousand dollars." And they'll be like, "I don't like it anymore." Right? That's the story <laughs> that I always tell people. Like the Pennywise, right? They're like that Pennywise is so cool. It's great, and they think it's maybe like four hundred, five hundred dollars, maybe, right? And it's, mm -hmm. and it's four times that. If you told them like. Most people wouldn't know any better. You'd be like, how much do you think that hot toy is? They'll probably be like, I don't know, 70 bucks or something. Like that's probably what they say when yeah. it's more like 400. So I think it's just a matter of it's normalized to us and you get used to something pretty quickly when it becomes normalized. So that's why even buying statues, that's maybe another tip we should have said, going into the statue game, I never thought I would pay $2,000 for a collectible. But once you do it once, it becomes normal. And you're like, okay, that's 1500 is not so bad, right? And now that like, when you do this type of stuff, Black Panther at 265, that's really good, right? Because you're used to yeah. paying more than that. So well, Will, with that being said, let me ask you like a segue yeah, to this. Do you think that's a bad thing that once you and this goes to mm. Because unlike, let's say, a compensator or let's say a muffler or, you know, a, a cat bag, let's say a car, a rim. Yeah. The, I guess the difference or a handbag for a girl because it's OK to feel weirded out with a price because we do that, too. Like if if a girl tells you her handbag is like eight. Right. That, that too. Yeah. You're going to be like, what the heck? Because we don't know. Right. We don't know how that how much is that. So I think that's fair that they would feel the same way with our stuff. Uh, right. With that being said, do you? suggest that that 
I guess the difference is the handbag they can bring out, right? Like they can use it. Mm-hmm. I do use this hot toys, not the way Lane uses his hot toys. But I <laughs> that's totally it. different. <laughs> that's totally different. But do you suggest that though? Like, because at mm-hmm. the end of the day, these things they just you know they stand, right? And they don't do anything. So what do you mean suggested insofar as like do you suggest like yeah. yeah? Do you set a limit on how much? Because we talked about passion and your love right. for this. Does that have a, a limit, like a, like a, a like a, a line does. that you shouldn't cross? It does. For example, like I mean, this is an extreme line, but for example, optical. I don't know if you saw that life size Hawkbuster that just got put up. Um, mm-hmm. so it's seventy two thousand dollars. Oh no! Right? That I, I don't even I don't even have that much money. Like so, I mean, even if I did, say I had seventy thousand dollars in my bank account right now, and I could be like, I could buy this Hawkbuster and literally have no money. Or that that's I think where the line is, right? And sometimes, for example, like I just so I got San Diego Comic Con tickets, right? That cost me what it was like 150 bucks for two days. But the flight out there is another almost 600. dollars So at that point, I had to drop all that money at once. So that's why I haven't pre-ordered Legolas or the Witch King or anything like that because I think that's where the line is, where it's going to become where the point where yes, I have the money, I can pay for it. But I want to also pace myself, and not put myself in a stressful situation where I look at my bank account and I'm like, yeah, I have the witch king, but I, I want to build my savings, right? Or I want to invest or whatever. So I feel like there's a line there, even with hot toys. Like you have to, I, I, that's just how I do it. Everyone can do it differently, but I just, I feel like it's, it's healthy to kind of maybe stop yourself a little bit sometimes and take a step back and just pause for like if you can paul like because sometimes you got to pre-order fast but if you can pause for like a day or so or even more and think about it and just be like where am i going to put this what kind of money am I, what is my situation looking like because i feel like it's very easy to get overwhelmed and overly excited very quickly um yeah. and like because back maybe a year or two ago i might have just pre-ordered the witch king already like I might have just been like, well, I, I really, I really fucking like it. So, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And I still might end up getting it, but it's like, I really got to think about it a little bit and assess my financial situation and be like, that's where I think the line is with hot toys and any other f- form of collectible, I would say. No, with that, like, th- is there a point where it's creepy? Hmm. You feel like you're kind of like, like extending it past one room. You mean like. Yeah, kind of like, are you obsessed? You know, because there, there's right. collecting and there's being obsessed as well. I, I mean, it right. might be a, a, a topic for a different day, but we, it, it's not like with that, I think that notion, it's not a matter of if you can afford it or not, because obviously you could. Right. The question is, should you, you know, should you own a life size? Let's say, you know, it's not a it's not a question of, hey, can you afford an eight thousand dollar Loki, you know, right. half scale? should you you know i guess right exactly i mean because for most people i mean that type of income um that 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 you know i would i would assume maybe there's some really high earners in the chat but like most of us are middle class right we're middle class earners so Mm -hmm. that's that's the point where yeah these statues do get pretty pricey same with hot toys i mean they're not super pricey on their own but if you buy a lot of them then they totally are so I, i think yeah i mean I had to catch myself recently because, you know, I'll give a story to people optical because you knew this. Like I lived in Delaware, right? I was living with a girl. We ended, it ended up not working out. I moved back to Maryland, right? At that point, my space was lessened because I moved back into a space where my brother had already done things with the house, right? So I had to make the decision of like, I had to get rid of some things, right? Because I didn't have quite the space that I had before. And I think that type of stuff can happen to you, right? You, you can travel to different places. You can have circumstances change. Maybe you have a kid, right? Something like that. And then your situation changes. So. I feel like there's so many factors to consider here and the way i've kind of tend to approach it is everyone can do things differently but it's start i started to let collecting invade other areas of my house like the living like the living area like my uh, my upstairs my actual room right and i get to the point i feel like where it's like okay this this the collecting is taking over my life and i'm not becoming will anymore i'm becoming like will the collector right so and that's that everyone can do things differently. Like that's fine. Like there, everyone, that's great if you want to do that. But for me, I just feel like it's good to have a healthy balance. And sometimes you don't see that until someone, maybe family or friends or someone pulls you back slightly and you're like, okay, take a step back from this, look at it and say, look at this, you know, realistically and logically, like, you know, let's try to assess what we have here and try to keep it I don't know that and i've even done that with some with uh, other friends too so what about you optical do you feel the same way i mean because buying hot toys i mean it's it's it, this isn't i mean it's not an investment but like it's a monetary investment we're putting in and a lot of us are putting in a significant amount of money here so yeah i i think the big the biggest i would say self-check 
would be like you said earlier yeah depending on how what your living situation is right like i, I have a family i don't right. want hot toys or collectibles in my living room like just just me i want right, it, exactly i would be the same in, way when somebody walks in, I don't want a half scale of you know <laughs> Iron Man in my kitchen. Yeah, right. <laughs> I want my kitchen to remain like a normal household. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm I'm in a converted walk-in closet, and I mostly stuff him in here. Now yeah. I don't care if they're through the roof or something. I, I, ideally not. When I when it starts getting out of hand and started like selling some things, but I'm also not a curated kind of guy who be like oh this needs to be spaced you know half an inch with each other it's like no right if they're cheap i'm gonna buy them if i buy them cheap i'm gonna figure out turn around see what the most expensive thing in my collection is then i'll get rid of them and then i cycle through that uh but yeah once it then starts invading if you have an iron man on your bathroom then i think something's going on there which <laughs> is like taking a poop and they'll be like oh man let me there's no lights let me <laughs> there's half turn on the iron man light <laughs> iron man lights right he here. even has toilet paper on the roll on him <laughs> dude uh, but yeah that that's kind of how i view it. and like at one point carlos and i had the conversation because i bought maja cases right for my six scale figures and they'll be here they said actually in March, I'm pretty excited about that. So, and I got enough to hold about 70 figures, right? So Carlos was like, well, why don't you do a whole wall of one six where you can have double that? But that's just too much, man. Like that's just, that's like 70 figures is about, for me personally, everyone's different. For me, that's about where I feel comfortable and not overwhelmed. Like yeah. that's a lot, but if you start having too much where I'm just like, okay, I have so many, like, trust me, moving those things back and forth, it's not fun. Like if you ever have to move this many collectibles, I think that's when it becomes real to you. Like, yeah. and that's why I think it's so important of setting that sort of guideline being like, hey, like I have a finite amount of space. This is the amount of room I have collectibles for. So if you want to buy new things, if you're full, you have to sell some stuff, yeah. right? That's just how it works. You can't keep expanding to other areas of the house because I've tried to do that. Trust me, I did it. And then it took me a while to realize this is not healthy and not good for me. And it's so, not going to stop. It's not no, gonna it's stop. never going to stop. Yeah. It's like a, a thing that grows out of control. It's like a monster. So. Um, I, again, I don't mean to lecture people, but this is just like an example I can give about myself that I think is, you know, is helpful to people. So yeah. I don't know, man, but Hey, we, we got to do a real philosophical chat there. I love that. <laughs>